Um, hello everybody, here we are with Alex McAdam. I'm June and we're going to have a wee conversation all about art. You may see oh, my really? background. <laughs> yes, really. I uh, don't know much about it, I just made a living with it for 40 years, so mm. no technical, no technical questions, please. But, uh, when did you first start art? What made you think that you would be good at it? No, as a child, just the normal drawing things, and then suddenly they turned out people were admiring them. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're really... I love your work, Alex. It's quite colourful. Did you... Have you always worked in, in colours? Well, the thing I did most in America was portraits. Oh. People, I'm fairly good at portraits. So yeah. For about five years, I sat out in the big shopping malls doing portraits and that was just a little colour, you know, especially yeah. especially with children. Yeah. Just the soft sort of pastels and so on. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. no, I think, to be quite honest, I like to do things that I know people would want hanging on their walls. So I had no illusions about great art or anything. It was just people would like to maybe live with that. And luckily enough, a lot have. Now, you mentioned America. Does that mean that you've travelled a lot with your work? Oh, yes, yes. I've lived mostly in Greece. I had about five years in America over a 10 or 12 year period. Yeah. And America was where I did best because as a friend of mine, a friend of mine said very complimentary, Americans would buy anything. <laughs> where is your hometown, Alex? Well, I was brought up in the gobbles of Glasgow. Oh. Well, that's a good reason for travelling. I had that chip in my shoulder about the gobbles until I finally got to Calcutta and I realised that uh, we, hadn't had it, we hadn't had it too bad at all. Greece is where I've spent most of my life. So in the summers, I managed to make a precarious living in the scenes of the village and the fishing boats, the characters. Because I think, like most of the hippies, I was looking for the classless man. Hmm. And I found out it was me. <laughs> yes, yes. It took me a couple of years to get there. I would consider Greece as my home, really. Would you? Although I'm very lucky to be where I am. Yeah, yeah. That's where I spent the longest time. Now, you know, the paintings that you've sent through, one of them is titled My Ex-Wife. That's my favourite. So, That's and, one of the poor lassies that trusted me. <laughs> what I would like to know is what kind of paint? Pen, pen and pencil. Pen and pencil. Pen and pencil. Yes. yes. I've got some here. Yeah, that's the whole thing and that's... It's uh, what they call, people might think that all pencils are the same, but they're not actually. Oh. This one is called Prismalo, yeah. and it's a very good pencil. Yeah. Well, that makes sense now, because I couldn't figure out exactly. And so what did you carry? Did you have a backpack full of art equipment, or what did you carry? No, the minimum, just the pen and pencils. And then when I got to Athens, I could go to an art shop there, yeah. get a bunch of stuff for the summer. You know, it was always quite, quite difficult to get materials. But I used to, when I, what I found is whatever country you're in, if you look apart to that country, you'll get on better. If you know what I mean. Yeah. I was lucky enough to be allowed to stand outside Vincent van Gogh's museum. Mm in Amsterdam, after a few months persevering to get chased away, I finally went back and stuck it out. And I did nearly 30 years there in the winter, in the winter. <laughs> yeah. It's really cold in Amsterdam in the winter. You're telling me I'm allowed to call him Vinny. Because I stood, <laughs> <laughs> stood out there in blizzards, actually. But I used to say, what, what do you need to be an artist in Amsterdam? I'd say, 
long red underwear and a sense of humour. Well, the the picture, the man with flowers, really makes me think of Vincent Van Gogh and and that kind of work. It's it's just lovely. Thank you. I take that as the biggest compliment. You remind you remind me of that man. But uh, all the characters that I drew, I actually worked with them, or I knew them well before I would dare to think, can I do a drawing of you know? Yeah. And living in a wee, living in a wee Greek village, or any village, if you're seen as the artist, then you're not really a part of the community. Mm -hmm. you know, you've got to show you're prepared to uh, shovel things as well. <laughs> is the man with flowers, that picture of the man with flowers, is that somebody that you were working with? Yes, yeah, because in the winter we used to go to Crete and pick the olives. And that that's why I love Greece in particular, because of the characters, the strong faces. Yeah. And especially the, the older the older women and gentlemen. Because they're really the character was there and they're just wonderful, wonderful people. Yeah. And you were you were the big draw in the in the square in Creef, with all your pictures. Well, it was a great day. I met a lot of nice people all together. Yeah, it was busy. And it's a day that sticks out. Oh, it was beautiful. Sticks out in my memory. Uh huh. So there was a nice, a nice English lady who came along, a young woman with a baby and a toddler, and she bought one of my drawings. She said it was her first day in Creef. Wow. And her husband had just. She and her husband had just moved here. Yeah, right. so yeah, yeah. In all my travels, if you'll pardon the pun, I always seem to land in my feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, we haven't mentioned your feet. <laughs> no, 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 a few a few days ago, we had a Susie. We had a, huh? a yoga lesson. We're just waiting for the lady to say, now touch your toes. <laughs> I haven't got any toes. I was in hospital in Amsterdam. Yes. The morning after, because I was so stoned on morphine, mm. the morning after the operation, I was sitting up in bed. When the nurses come in, I was sitting up in bed singing, yesterday, I'm not half the man I used to used be. To be. <laughs> and did you not do a painting called, or a drawing, maybe it's a drawing, called I Left My Feet in Amsterdam. Just, it's up on the wall here, one of the prints, yes, and that's, oh. that's my favourite. <laughs> I gave the original to the surgeon who actually did the job. Oh, why? He, he said, uh, at, one, at one point you said, give the left one to Bob Dylan and the right one to Willie Nelson. <laughs> I want that on my gravestone. <laughs> and people would say, who did get the inspiration for that picture or this picture? I would have to say the inspiration was cheap wine and necessity. <laughs> First of all, necessity. If you want to eat every day, you better get on Did with it. Something. Uh -huh. so I had a little gallery at one point in Amsterdam. Yeah, just 50, a tiny place, but just 50 yards from the Anne Frank house. Yeah, yeah. Because you need you need to be near a service sort of establishment. Yeah. So we had that for well, I was in it for about four or five years until my wife said, "Wait a minute, you're older than my mother and my father." She said, "So <laughs> let's get realistic here." You've been a street bum. You've been a character in Amsterdam, and you've been a gallery owner. That's I'm not that. a gallery owner. <laughs> and a bus No, not that. It was Amsterdam's smallest gallery. But as I say, it was just right on the same corner as the Anne Frank house. So we got the queues, queues of people going into the Anne Frank house. Yeah, yeah. Well, the same as the Van Gogh. The whole world came to see Vincent, and a lot of them got me as well. <laughs> Lucky. You can't afford a Van Gogh. By an Alex McAdam. <laughs> well, thanks very much, Alex. I'll God see you. God bless. I really enjoyed that. <laughs>